Hello everyone, my name is Steve Menchin Friend. I'm a pastor in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan and also the associate staff at the University of Saskatchewan for CMDA. The image that you've been looking at on your screen is the image of a clock that is designed to run for 10,000 years. There are two rings that surround the face of the clock and the one ring clicks every year and the inside ring clicks every 100 years. And so to get those two rings back to their original starting position would take 10,000 years. Uh, the mind behind this project is a man by the name of Danny Hill whose uh, ultimate goal is to build a massive version of this clock buried in a mountain in Texas. Uh, the money behind the project is comes from none other than Jeff Bezos of Amazon.com. Uh, they, as they were talking about the project, really one of their goals for the project is that as people come to see the clock in Texas or as they read about it on the internet and see pictures of it, uh, that they would spend a moment reflecting on the future, that the clock would help them to consider the reality of the future and also to consider what it means to live right now, today, with the reality of a future that will move forward for 10,000 years. Uh, it's a powerful idea and it's just interesting to me that these two individuals would set, spend so much time and money just to help people think about how they would live now with the reality of the future in front of them. Okay, uh, let me pray for you and then we're going to read from the book of Luke chapter 18. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, the book of Luke. Thank you for this text and as we approach it, as we reflect on it, help us to hear and see what you would have us hear and see. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let me read for you Luke uh, chapter 18. And then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversaries. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice, and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? In this parable, Jesus is contrasting God with this unjust judge. He is saying that God is not like this judge. And yet there are moments in our lives, moments in time, perhaps even at this point in time for you, where we are tempted to ask the question, is God really just? Does he listen? Does he care? It was the same in Jesus's day. Today we are surrounded by racial tension. We are surrounded by the reality of COVID-19 and the over half a million deaths that it has caused. And perhaps it is something closer that causes you to ask this question about God's care and justice and if he listens. Perhaps it is someone close to you that is sick or maybe you yourself have experienced a sickness or maybe it is just an interior doubt. We are all at moments in our lives caught in the middle of chaos like this widow in the parable who was helpless, who was marginalized in her own society, who was at moments overwhelmed by the culture in which she lived that did not consider her at all. And she might be one of these individuals who would ask themselves, is God just? Does he listen? And does he care? 
And yet it is Jesus' point in the parable that God is just. He does listen and he does care. And so he encourages his disciples to pray and to hold on in these difficult circumstances that they find themselves in, in these difficult circumstances that this widow found herself in, in the difficult circumstances that we find ourselves in today. Jesus is encouraging us to consider the reality of our futures, the reality of our life with God. What does it mean for us to live today? What does it mean for us to live right now, knowing that our future is real, knowing that our life with God is real in these difficult times? Whether you're a medical or a dental student, or whether you're a physician or a dentist with their own practice, what does it mean for you to live prayerfully and faithfully, knowing that you serve a God who cares? knowing that you serve a God who listens, knowing that you serve a God who is just. Might we have the eyes to see those moments in our lives, in our practices, in our relationships, those opportunities that God places in front of us when we are called to act in love and grace, when we are called to reflect the God that we serve, when we are called to reflect a God who has a listening spirit, a God who has a caring nature, a God of compassionate justice. We do have a future and a connection with a gracious and loving God. And my hope for you is that your life might be shaped and your interactions with the people around you might be shaped by that God who cares, who listens, and who is just. I hope you all have a great day. Take care.